Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining this third session of the College of Chemicals and Materials Symposium. I'm Irshad Ahmad from Bioengineering Department at KPPM. So it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Yusuf Ben Khud. Uh, he is Professor of Chemical Process Engineering for Energy and Environment at Mohammed Port Polytechnic University, Morocco. He holds a PhD in Applied Science from the University of Mons, Belgium. Uh, his doctoral experience covers various aspects of reactive and non-reactive uh, absorption. During his research career, Professor Ben Mephout was awarded uh, the prestigious European Marie Curie Fellowship in Natural Sciences and uh, NSERC Research Fellowship. In 2018, he was honored with the Young African Researcher Award by ASRT Egypt. Uh, the award recognizes his research in the water energy environment sciences. Uh, our speaker has published more than 100 papers in reputable journals. Uh, he is the main inventor in more than 15 ap application patents, and his research works accumulated more than 15,000 citations. Uh, Professor Bemifut was recognized among the 1% most highly cited scientists in 2019-2021 based on Web of Science. Let's welcome Professor Ben Mahmoud, who will be speaking to us on the quest for materials processing systems for the sustainable production of valuable commodities. Thank you, uh, Dr. Irshad. <clears throat> um, thank you for um, the invitation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be among uh, such uh, distinguished speakers. Um, so today um, um, I will give you an idea about um, what, uh, uh, what happens behind the scene uh, during my last 15 years of research. Uh, the purpose is to give you a little bit idea about the concept behind the, the, the research that I've been doing uh, on development of innovative materials. And also uh, my research is basically um, uh, at the interface between chemistry, uh, physical chemistry, and chemical engineering. So, uh, so uh, the, the the purpose will be more on uh, talking about the, the uh, how uh, new concepts based on innovative materials can be very uh, powerful tool to um, to address problems of energy efficiency and uh, environmental sustainability. So first of all, um, uh, my my work now uh, been the work my work been more in chemical engineering than uh, I spent a lot of time working on chemistry and then uh, now at Muhammad Six Polytechnic University more focused on um, high tierial uh, uh, works developing bridging lab scale uh, uh, research to commercial level. Um, this is the unit department uh, being created where, uh, that I'm directing at UM6P. And what we do basically is we look at uh, different uh, pathways uh, to help researchers, engineers uh, to uh, develop prototypes and uh, pilot scale up, um, technology maturation assessment. This is very important. Why we are addressing this? Because <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, we, we, uh, when we develop generating materials, uh, which are, I will explain more, which are very important, which is very important activity. There is a lack of uh, um, uh, support in terms of uh, maturation of technology. So that's really, that's why we are doing this. Uh, and uh, technology intelligence. But before I, I start my presentation and show you the outline, I would like to uh, share with you some of my thoughts about in, in evolution of technology in our life. So if you think about the automobile industry, we see a, a tremendous progress in, in the evolution of technologies. Now, if we talk about telecommunication, the same thing. But now if we move to chemical um, industry, um, uh, we, we do see a lot of changes, probably in equipment side, but if you look inside the processes, which is basically materials where as, as a sorbent or catalysts or, or, or membranes, you don't see much changes in the map of catalysts or adsorbent that are used. Basically, zeolites 
all the time since the last uh, 80, 80 years. So what is the reason for that? The reason for that is uh, a lot. So it's not the topic of, of my talk today, but what I want to convey is uh, in the beginning of this, of this talk is that materials are the heart of chemical processes. Materials have a direct impact on process performance, product quality, operational costs, and cost of production, which directly has an impact on economics. What, what people uh, and uh, a lot of researchers don't know is that innovation in adsorbent membrane catalysts can improve five times the performances versus innovation in process only. Meaning that today, if I, uh, have, if I have a team of engineers, we do development in terms of equipment and process, we can improve by 20%. However, if we do work on materials, which is very difficult, it requires a lot of time and a lot of maturation, maturation, maturation of the process takes a lot of time. That's actually 100% possibilities of performance improvements. Now, I want to go back and talk about specifically focus on the purification and separation, which is something that I've been working on for the last uh, 15 years. It's actually, um, uh, uh, in, in addition to uh, the catalyst, cat catalysis, so uh, purification alone represents 50% of 2011 global energy use. So now if we, uh, uh, the demand on commodities will grow and it's expected by three times by 2050. So if we continue business as usual, uh, that will be actually 45% of total uh, of 2011 energy users uh, for separation alone into, into, into 2050. This is actually huge. Uh, separation is everywhere, um, is in energy sector, in environment, uh, circular economy sector in water. And this is some of the applications. And in my in, in, in during my my career, been working on different uh, topics, um, uh, touching uh, on industry, residential sectors, and transportation sector, um, uh, more specifically on energy efficiency, on advanced processes to make the use of fossil fuel sustainable, and also on fuel and energy careers. But this is just an example before I go before I, I start my my to go to the topic. So my outline today, I'd like to talk about specifically on separation and particularly about adsorptive separation. Uh, I'd like to talk about type of separation complexities, the, uh, the classification of these uh, complexities in gas vapor separations. And the bulk of my talk will be on advanced adsorptive mechanism found using metanogreek frameworks that's actually hardly applicable on other solid state materials. We had a, an amazing presentation by Professor Amariagi, who is actually a pioneer in uh, reticular chemistry uh, with other uh, researchers like uh, uh, the respected Professor Mohammed Daudi at Kaust here in uh, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, and also uh, Professor Amar Farha in Northwestern in the US and other uh, prominent scholars in the US and uh, in Europe. And I will give an examples with real, uh, concepts using those innovative materials that actually can make a difference and can make a huge reduction in, in, in energy efficiency and in performances. And I will talk specifically about CO2 separation, CO2 capture and natural gas upgrading. And in this case, when I'm talking about the reason, meaning that I'm adding the complexity of adding hydrogen sulfide. And I will give one example among a lot of examples that have been working on, which is butane and methane. So let's now talk about the uh, separation complexities. The one, the, one of the first complexity is the scale. So now if we talk about the power plants, uh, I think 500 megawatts uh, uh, can produce with considering a lot of hypotheses and simplifications. And uh, we, that's actually uh, present five to 10 Five, five to ton, tons CO2 per minute, which is actually huge. That scale is extremely difficult for, uh, uh, for separation. Even I mean, scrubbing, which is actually a very um, uh, mature technology in, in CO2 capture cannot handle that. Uh, the, the other complexity is the minimal difference in the molecular size, uh, shape and size. 
And here an example I'm showing, the example of natural gas upgrading when you separate molecules like methane, CO2, and H2S. And the other, the last example that I'm showing here is the minimal difference in chemical and physical properties. And the, I'm showing here the example of ethylene and ethane. And prop, there is also examples of uh, propane, propylene, and, uh, and butane, isobutane, and so on. So we started, or we end up at the, in 2017 by coming with um, uh, a, a separation, uh, uh, classification of separation complexity. Uh, this is extremely important so you, so the audience can understand uh, what, what is needed and what is required based on different concepts and mechanisms to achieve different separation complexities. So the first level of separation complexity that we call when we have a two molecules that we separate with a difference between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6, um, uh, and I'll give example here in not, not, not normal paraffin and isoparaffins. Uh, some work have been done in the past with zeolites. It was not very perfect separations, but I will give you an example today about how this emerging um, um, class of materials, which is called MOFs, can, can, can achieve um, an amazing and uh, performances. The second level of separation complexity is when you have um, two molecules that you want to separate with a difference in size between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. And that's an example of an extremely important separation that actually uh, represents 1% of worldwide energy consumption, which is olefin, uh, olefin and normal paraffins. And the third level with complexity when you have less than 0 0.2 angstrom difference, and that's actually something extremely difficult and uh, an example here is oxygen nitrogen or nitrogen methane separation. Um, another another um, element that I want to, to add is uh, when we talk about adsorptive, it's uh, about to call relative energy use by various separation technologies. We already know that when you, um, you when implement adsorption technology or membrane technology, you basically reduce drastically the energy uh, consumption versus the conventional uh, technology, which is distillation. Another important element in the, the, the building the concept uh, is, is, is the link between the uh, structural intrinsic properties of the material or separation agent, it could be adsorbent or membrane, and with, uh, and with the, the, the properties of uh, the, the process performances, okay? And this is extremely important. Meaning that when we, when we have a, extremely important to have um, information about what we need to be done in terms of structural properties, in terms of tuning the materials in order to achieve um, high selectivity or high uptake or high permeation flux, that will actually uh, in turn affect the, the recovery, purity and the production in the, in the process side. Um, what uh, the other thing that is extremely important here is to uh, define uh, from the intrinsic properties to relate to relate the intrinsic properties to the mechanisms involved in adsorptive separation. And here now, I go more specific on adsorption. Uh, for example, if we uh, work on uh, if we want to uh, um, target equilibrium based separation, adsorptive separation, basically there is a need to have a functional groups. And, and I will show an example. Uh, when we talk about kinetic based driven separation, adsorptive separation, there is more focus on the control of pore size and, and, and the, 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 the shape of the, of, the, of, the, of the pores, channels, cages, and so on. And particularly what I want to focus on my talk today is to talk about the combined kinetic and thermodynamic uh, cooperative effects that actually led to discovery of amazing performances. And I will give an example about CO2 capture. And of course, this work is continuing and I'm in my group working on generalizing this concept on the, the other separation uh, applications. 
So the, the kinetic driven or the, the equilibrium driven uh, mechanism is, is, is simple. When you have a molecule A and molecule B and you want to, um, you want to separate them, you have in this case a molecule E that is more adsorbent than the other and you have the uh, same kinetics for both molecules. So uh, the, in this case, and this is the, here I'm showing the, 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 the kinetic thermodynamic uh, diagram showing the, the, the positioning of the molecules. And uh, this mechanism basically requires much higher interaction for A than B, meaning much higher energy input for this option recycling. The, the, one, one important aspect that I want to mention is when we talk about adsorption, generally people tend to think about equilibrium-based, equilibrium separation, and only by interactions. Uh, and that's, 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 but in general, there is several, several mechanisms that, as I showed before. And an example uh, that I, I, um, I've been working on the last, in, in, uh, when I was at Diverse Photo with the, one of my students, Rodrigo Serna, and now he's, uh, a brilliant professor in Finland um, is, is um, uh, grafting or um, uh, uh, functionalizing uh, porous materials with, with amines. So that's one one on one example of when you target uh, strengthening uh, interactions for CO2, for example, in this case, uh, as a molecule A, and uh, that will lead to very high selectivities in the same line as I mean, scrubbing uh, selectivities. The what struck me in 2012 and 2010 is uh, is the perception about physical absorption. Uh, most of scientists think believe that physical absorption cannot handle uh, CO2 capture uh, where when you have CO2 very diluted in the streams. And that's, it, it was this perception. I was, back then it was clear for me that uh, th there should be some possibilities from the material side of point of view, from the controlling tunability of pores, control, controlling the functionalities to be able to have extremely good separation selectivities with physical social. And that was what happened in 2013 when we, discovered an old material actually, old material synthesized in 1994. It's uh, called hexafluicosilicate uh, materials. It's based on fluorinated materials. Uh, in this case, as you can see here, um, we have uh, uh, materials built with two ligands, pyrazine and bipyridium. And in this case, we've been, we observed that this material actually made with copper had extremely high selectivities. What I'm showing here is the, actually the uptake of CO2 that's actually flattening very quickly at already around uh, uh, 10,000 ppm already. So it's actually, this is a very low concentration, very low partial pressures of CO2. So this is actually was a, a, a breakthrough in the field showing that you can make very high selective separation using adsorption by using physical absorption with only 50 kilojoule per mole. Uh, no need to get to, to 100 or 120 kilojoule per mole as in the case of amines. So the cooperative effect works like that as if I, if I draw the uh, thermodynamic and the kinetic diagram, you have the best optimal positioning of of A and B, B differable, A favorable kinetically and thermodynamically, as shown here in the adsorption isotherm and the kinetics or diffusion, and uh, B is B very differable, differable kinetically and thermodynamically, and this is how it works. So if we look at what's happening in the pores versus the the column brick to experiments, you have CO two will go first in the pores. In the channels and uh, favorably, favorably uh, absorbed thermodynamically and kinetically, and that's what actually would happen: infinite selectivity uh, for CO two in these materials. So, one important aspect of 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 these materials is, is that they were uh, stable, but only when CO two will be uh, will be around in the the the, the, the sorbent. 
Meaning once you have more, uh, uh, more uh, water or uh, uh, water vapor around surrounding material than CO2, then what will happen is that uh, uh, th there is a hydrolysis of, of, of uh, happening and actually the material actually collapse. And that's, uh, and that's actually the, the next step that I will show is was the fixture generation and I will move to the second generation. This concept that I, the cooperative effect is can be applied to any uh, separation technology, um, depending on the concentration of the CO2 in different, in different uh, sectors. And one if important aspect, and when we talk about is, uh, is the uniformity of energy consumption sites. Extremely important. So if I take an example of a material with this, such a profile of heat of adsorption or entropy of adsorption, and another profile like that, which is very flat, not very high, around from 35 to 55 in the physical, in physical absorption domain. Uh, and you, you will see that um, you can make probably air capture with a certain efficiency with, the, with this material, with the, such profile. But once you increase the concentration with different application with having uh, less or um, much, much more CO2 uh, concentration, you cannot make a good separation with this material, but you will have it with this material. So this is basically one of the main uh, important aspects of uh, this, this concept that is actually uh, been discovered. And luckily, and well, um, I would say uh, a concept is not applied to only do this platform or this material that's related material, uh, MOFs, related MOFs, but other scientists after us, they try to uh, um, uh, prove the concept on other materials. This is another MOF and the same way, uh, very small pores with the very high charge density of uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, moth based on oxalates and another, mat another material, uh, a zeolite basically, uh, a microporous copper silicate, where actually they, they did the same a very confined pores with the very high charge density and, and uh, the results and bingo, the result is there. Same, same performances. So as I mentioned, this was kind of existing materials from the literature where we've been uh, trying to uh, to 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 to, um, just to analyze, to screen very well, to um, and look at uh, concepts. Now, and I mentioned that uh, hexafluoric silicate was materials uh, based fluorinated hexafluoric silicate was now were not stable. So, what we try to do now is to improve the hydro hydrostability and thermostability. Um, this is the, the initial materials, and this is the new ones based on um, uh, by changing actually the SF6 component to NBOA F5 components. So that's allowed us to get extremely stable materials, second generation. You can even boil them in water and they stay stable. And this is the paper we published back then, uh, basically almost the same performance and um, and and uh, same performance because we're applying the same concepts. So that's, that's the beauty. And that's actually the beauty of reticular chemistry already uh, described very well by Professor Amariaghi uh, in the first presentation of this symposium. Uh, here, um, just give you an idea about the performances uh, of, of this material. This is the hexafluorosilicate. This is the 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 NBA five one and this is the the benchmark the I mean Akus Akus I mean uh, meaning that we can make almost the same performances but with much less energy for uh, for, for recycling what I what you see here is a real actually a real a real what's real CO two localization that was actually collected using single X ray um, measurements and you can see that CO two has a perfect positioning. Uh, surrounded by uh, the, 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 the fluorines and uh, it's stayed there. It's it just perfect, perfect positioning for CO2 to be absorbed. And that's the reason why we have this high selectivity. The, 
again, uh, I highlight again this reactional chemistry capabilities of metanogenic frameworks and for this platform specifically. Um, here we become the NBF5 component was changed by aluminum F5 components or iron, meaning that we can also target uh, reducing drastically the costs when you go from N NBOF5, the nobium, to aluminum and iron. And by doing this, we introduce it and in coordinated metal sites. And, and that's actually com completely changed the, the picture from the property point of view. And, and accordingly, we change completely the, the, the application and, and the process. Uh, so what we've been capable to do is uh, look at um, now uh, the, 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 the performances of CO2 in presence of H2S or CO2 in presence of water, okay? And the, the results of this work been uh, uh, is not surprising, but um, uh, unique because we were capable, this is the NBA5, we're capable to show that by moving from NBA5 where we have much higher selectivity for CO2 versus H2S, and this is what you see here is the common break to experiments. And this is here a very unique experiment that we initiated back then is to make a temperature uh, program at desorption and look at actually the composition of the adsorbent phase. So what you see here is what's happening in adsorption. And what you see here is really what's the real composition of adsorbent phase. So when you move from NBA5 to aluminum 5 you can see that you change completely the situation the positioning or the selectivity from a CO2 selective to a CO2 H2S selectivity equal to one. When someone see that, say, okay, so it's equal to one, so it's used it. No, actually what's, what is behind here is that what we are showing, what I'm showing here is that we, with these materials, because of the addition of our condensate our condensate metal sites, we can absorb both CO2 and H2S without competition. So, and that's actually proven here when we do a program at, uh, temperature program at desorption, and we see that the both phases are there, absorbent phases are there, CO2 and H2S. So this is, was actually a breakthrough, and that meaning that when we do reticular chemistry, we can target uh, non-competitive absorption, non-competitive separation uh, of two components, of two gases or two vapors, uh, or two volatile organ organic compounds. This is extremely important. And that uh, will resolve a lot of problem in processes. In this case, you simplify completely the natural gas upgrading uh, system. So, um, so my, uh, my next, um, uh, so I think I have five minutes left. Uh, my next, uh, uh, what I want to share with you next is an example when you have now not equilibrium based or kinetic based or cooperative effect, but more full sieving mechanism. Um, and this is about an extremely unique uh, platform that I classify as a, a, a kind of, by analogy to zeolites, uh, as um, a 5A uh, platform. <laughs> Uh, it's FCU, uh, FCU platform. This is actually um, built uh, by uh, using uh, a trifunctional ligand here in this case, in this particular case, which is uh, one, of the, one of the FCUs. It's uh, generally a linear ligand, the two connected MBB with, uh, uh, by adding rare earths that actually will allow to uh, uh, make a hexagonal clear cluster in situ um, with the addition of uh, fluorobenzoic acid. And you make a 12 connected SBU with the two connected SBU that will make this amazing MOF, which is FCU. It's, this is actually the same equivalent to the IU66 for zirconium, but in this case um, is with uh, earth. So in this MOF, you have uh, octahedral cavity and tetrahedral cavity. And what is important in this case, and I will mention later, is that you have a unique um, uh, opening here that, we, that will actually allow to address to connect to, to, to go to, uh, to access to the pores. And this is extremely important. So, and this is can be made with any, 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 any rare earth metal and with the uh, various, uh, uh, various ligands and, um, and uh, organic building blocks. So 
without going into details, basically we've been making those materials with this, this different ligands among them, this one and this one with the different sizes. And this allowed us to get, uh, as I, again, this is just to show that with this ligand that I'm showing here, this is the smallest one. We can get actually uh, a, a triangular window uh, with the, actually an aperture of 4.7 angstrom. Okay, this is, uh, was, however, with this ligand and other with this one, we get, we get obviously bigger aperture size. So the result was uh, an unprecedented molecular exclusion of branched paraffin, as I'm showing here. Uh, the, the pentane adsorption here, the normal pentane is, 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 is adsorbed with, um, uh, with the, uh, a very decent capacity. I'm not showing the kinetics, but the kinetics is very fast with no adsorption of isopentane. Same thing here for butane and the, the isomer uh, isobutane. Um, th this is actually a, 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 a TG uh, DSC measurement showing that actually you, uh, you have a, a 50 kilo, 56 kilojoule per mole for a butane absorption, and you don't have actually, this is a proof actually using um, uh, um, uh, heat flow that actually you don't have any absorption of IZ butane. And the corresponding um, column breakthrough experiments that shows actually that actually um, IZ butane is not absorbed actually is similar. It's breakthrough, uh, the nitrogen here is just as a reference to show that actually it's not absorbing at all. So we've been, this is a platform, another example of showing that the power of this MOFs uh, and to actually address very difficult separations uh, that could actually reduce the energy uh, efficiency drastically. You go uh, with this, one of the biggest ligands, you go from six angstrom aperture to, to five to 4.7 using this one and this one. And that's give you different mechanism, equilibrium based absorption for uh, for for FCU using this ligand, uh, this organic within block, kinetic driven separation within, I'm not showing this because this would take at least another 15 minutes, but the most important is the molecular exclusion uh, that's actually sieving, which is actually very important um, mechanism that should be uh, focused on for separation to increase the efficiency. And, and I'm not sure if I have time. Do I have time, Dr. Ishad? So five minutes? Can um, I? Or, I think the time is uh, over now. It's over. Uh, so let me just conclude. I don't want okay. to, I wanted to um, show other things. Uh, uh, what I want to, the, 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 miss, the, the take home message here is that um, um, advanced materials, innovative materials can, can really make a, real, a great impact on and processes. Uh, what I'm showing here is uh, different achievements already done with, with, with this uh, unique um, uh, family of solid state materials, which is MOF, are already um, difficult, complex separations, but still a lot of things to do with uh, this, this, um, class, this class of complexity, which is when you have a, a very small difference in in in, um, in, um, in, in, uh, in in gases or in molecules that you want to separate, the uh, very important conclusion to take to, to take home is this cooperative effect involved in thermodynamic kinetics allow actually to 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 achieve more or similar performance. Uh, as I mean, scrubbing uh, and by using just physical adsorption, which is um, very unique. And I will um, second what Professor Amariagi mentioned about molecular chemistry. It's allowed to achieve um, full molecular receiving of important commodities, which is extremely very important. So, very quickly, I would like to uh, thank um, my university, Mohammed VI Polytechnic University. And uh, KAUST, I've been at KAUST for nine years and it was been an amazing journey uh, working with the Professor Mohammed Daudi. And um, um, I want to thank University of Ottawa as well and uh, KAUST and uh, Aramco, sorry, Aramco for, uh, for the support when I was uh, at KAUST. Thank you so much and I'd be happy to answer any questions.
Thank you, Professor Yusuf. It was very nice and informative presentation. Uh, so there is one participant will ask uh, questions. Uh, Yunsa Omar. Can you hear us on Yun Saumar? There is Dr. Bashir Nabusi. Uh, Salaam alaikum. Good evening. Very late evening for everybody. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure how many people are able to stay this late, but uh, uh, it's great seeing you, Dr. Yusuf, and uh, you, so very proud of the work that. Uh, uh, you and uh, Dr. Dawoodi and Dr. Yaghi have done. Um, and of course, it's enabling something, one of the most important challenges, which is capturing CO2. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to log in until the middle of your presentation. Uh, oh, I've been struggling <laughs> for, for a while. Uh, the question I have is on a technical, practical uh, side. And of course, uh, you uh, and Dr. Dawoodi and Dr. Yaghi have been developing and inventing some of the best uh, metal organic framework uh, uh, materials in the world. And I'll actually highlight that at the end of my presentation, which is a lot less technical, a lot more uh, application oriented. Um, but my question to you is, um, how far are we from uh, bringing MOFs uh, to large scale capture sites? Um, yeah. What, and beyond that, what are, uh possibly the uh um uh the pros and cons of mofs versus amines um for that application uh, as well as for direct air capture in very low concentration uh, i think this is a very loaded question but i'd appreciate yeah. if you could describe those three areas uh, you know time before we have large scale um, uh, what are the challenges in, certain, in terms of absorption, desorption of CO2 energy and cost maybe? And third is um, how far are we from direct air capture and which materials do you see as playing the biggest role there? Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, um Well, um, uh, to be frank with you, um, uh, when you, a question is, is extremely complex. <laughs> and why? Because, uh, uh, because there is uh, different factors. So there is actually, first of all, there is um, the acceptance of engineers, of change of technologies. Uh, I'm engineer by background, I'm chemical engineer. And one of the, uh, you know, if you ask anyone, you go to any gas plants, uh, and I visited some of them in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, natural gas plant, and you ask them about CO2 capture, they would tell you, well, uh, our I mean, carbon technology is, 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 is amazing. Is, is, uh, we are fine with it. Uh, so it works. Um, so the, the thing is, what I'm saying is, uh, MOFs, um, they have a lot of challenges. And one of the challenge that we are facing is, uh, is, is the costs of the material. The costs. Uh, the one now, I was mentioning the example of NBF five. That's actually nobium. Uh, th this metal is very expensive. However, we've made efforts to use direct air chemistry, which is one of the strengths of of MOFs, to switch this metal from nobium to aluminum and iron, which is very cheap. However, we still have a lot, a big problem in in the in the organic part because those materials are hybrid. So we need also the, the molecular building block, the organic molecular building block. That's, that's actually, uh, 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 Dr. Dabusi is, it, it will require a lot of efforts uh, of chemical, chemical companies. I'll give you an example. BSF uh, announced that they can make a MOF with $5 a kilo or less than $5 a kilo. The reason why one of them are because one of the precursors organic building block, the two was aluminum and the other one was a secondary product of their, of their production. So was actually not the main products in their plants. So that's the reason why the cost was 
a small. Uh, so what I'm saying, what I want to convey is there is a lot of challenges and uh, I think MOF uh, development should follow. And I mentioned before the, the, uh, in the, the unit department that I created at UM6P uh, uh, that I'm directing uh, on, on actually technology development cell called that actually help in the maturation of, pro of, of uh, processes, maturation of uh, technologies. One of the, uh, sincerely today, if you talk to me about um, uh, CO2 capture from flue gas, I don't think there is any absorbent MOF that can handle, or, or even zeolite or sorbent that can handle all the, 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 the amount of uh, CO2 that need to be captured. Just to give you an, uh, an idea, and I mentioned that in my presentation, I, I think you missed it, 500 megawatts power plant, that actually, with a lot of simplification, a lot of hypothesis, that actually five to 10 minutes, uh, 10 tons CO2 per minute. This is a huge. I don't think there is any technology that can handle that. Um, the addition, uh, and that's one. Uh, for the air capture, I think I will be, I will be uh, conservative and say, yes, for air capture, we, there is materials now, uh, within uh, uh, within MOF community that can make uh, uh, probably air capture with five to ten times less than conventional techniques in terms of in terms of uh, um, which mean you know the, the people reported in the US and several startups reported seven hundred dollars five hundred dollars uh, a ton for air capture and I think there is materials that can do it with less than one hundred dollars uh, today uh, for for air capture. However, still the problem uh, exists of scale up of materials and uh, making the precursors for those materials cheap. This is a challenge, Doctor Dabusi, for mm -hmm. me. It's is really the, uh, the 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 price of materials, and in addition to this, there is. We sh they, they, they should be a real, a, a slow maturation process should happen. Meaning that you have a process in the lab, you should do a pre-pilot and confirm and get more data, um, uh, calculate the capex, opex, and all, all, all what is required based on a certain, with a certain uncertainty, then make a pilot and refine more those data to, to make, to, to to confirm the COPEX and OPEX before deployment. This is very important and this is lacking. This is actually what I say, the, the, the connection between industry and, uh, and, 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 and academia. And there is in the middle, in between, there is no much, there's, there is a few um, uh, works on maturation of processes. And this is actually something that I can share with you. If you send me your, uh, your email, I can share with you. Uh, the work that I'm doing here with, the, with a team of engineers, by the way, and researchers. I have a department with professors and engineers working together on, um, on uh, uh, not only on CO2 capture, but more on uh, local problems here in Morocco with regard to fertilizers. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. No problem. I hope I yeah. answered the question, with Dr. Dabusi. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there was a question from the participant that any viewpoint on the green synthesis of MOPs? Green synthesis. Well, uh, we should be very careful with the word green. I always, I always say... <laughs> Everything is green know. nowadays, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is anything, there is nothing, nothing green uh, for me. I would say um, sustainable synthesis, yeah. more than green, uh, meaning that uh, maybe you lose less solvents, uh, um, uh, it's actually a good question. Thank you so much. You know, this hexafluorosilicate, uh, first generation that I showed in this presentation, it can be made green or sustainable, not green, sustainable. With, with, I would say we should be very specific, we say not green, not sustainable, but solvent free, uh, heat free, something like that. So always something that uh, is less in the, in the synthesis process that actually make the, the process more sustainable. 
Yes, this material is basically extra free silicate can be made just by mixing uh, the precursors and just grinding without any without any solvents, for example. But, but I think my 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 opinion is that uh, this is this is for another stage. I think now the, the main focus is to address the cost problem of moths of these materials. That's that basically this is my my opinion, personal opinion. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Yusuf. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Dr. Othman. Uh, I like the talk of uh, MOF and how the structures of MOF are synthesized and the beautiful, uh, let us say, topography of what we are seeing on the ground. But my question is, is it, I mean, you were talking about the problem of making MOFs on a large scale. So is there any other techniques that have been used instead of MOFs? And I saw zeolites, I saw MOFs working. What about polymers uh, that uh, showed some, uh, let's say, potential uh, on the ground for the uh, CO2 capture and that to us? Well, well uh, sometimes we should be careful, Dr. Atman. Should, um, uh, there is a requirement for a every application. I, I mentioned several, several of them. I can maybe come back. I don't know if I can come back. and Maybe I cannot anymore. Oh, I can. Just to give you an example of a requirement for each uh, CO2 application, because different CO2 applications imply different concentrations. Okay. Now oh, here, here, I want just to show this. So this is this is basically different application with different concentrations. Okay. Uh, polymers actually sometimes they are not very very cheap making making the polymers. They are also very expensive. <laughs> So what I'm saying is, uh, when we talk about CO2 capture or CO2 separation, we should be very specific at which concentration, because uh, some polymers they could probably get uh, if you go high pressure, high pressure, uh, and for syn gas processing, for example, you can make a decent selectivity that will allow you to to get uh, this um, um, acceptable cost technical economic feasibility for, for the polymer, okay? Because this is done on, because the process, the stream itself is at high pressure, uh, 30 bar or 40 bar. But when you talk about, um, for example, same thing for natural gradient, although the CO2 is 5%. However, when you talk about confined space or air capture, I don't think there is any polymer that can handle this, this diluted streams, diluted CO2 streams. So we should be very specific uh, about the concentrations. Uh, polymers, yes, uh, probably as, as a membrane, as uh, I would say, from the perspective of process intensification, it could be the hybridization of the process, a membrane first to reduce the, uh, to, to enrich the CO2 to around 80%. And then another process of absorption, depending on how, what is the the end use of the CO2? Because at the end, we should also think about utilization of CO2. What you're gonna do with the CO2 after, okay? So if requirement is to get 90%, 99%, then we should add hybridization process, I mean, hybridization uh, concept but using adsorption. So if probably enrichment further is not needed, probably 90 or 80% is enough to basically convert CO2 to something else. Okay, so th this is case by case. We, we, th this is actually something that is missing as well in the in the in the scientific community. There is no scenarios, uh, uh, studies on scenarios, different scenarios depending on the properties of of the solvent. And this is actually what we are doing as well in in this in this textile unit. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Yusuf. So Okay, so the session has now to come to an end, and I wish to thank all the speakers for your exciting presentations and discussions. I am also thankful to the audience for their participation. Uh, at this point, I will hand over to Dr. Uthman, who will give us the concluding remarks of the symposium. Thank you. Dr. Uthman, right, thank please. You.
thank you very much, Dr. Shad. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the president of uh, KFUPM, uh, Dr. Mohammed Sagaf, uh, the dean of College of, Sci of Chemicals and Materials, Dr. Abdelaziz Saadi. Also, I would like to thank our distinguished speakers that have been uh, enriching our knowledge throughout this symposium yesterday and today, which was uh, uh, very, very, very important talks. We had uh, over 500 uh, attendees during the two days, which is uh, an excellent opportunity for us for uh, embarking in this uh, uh, symposiums, especially when we are talking about innovative materials. We know that even innovative materials are very important uh, part of science that helps in sustaining the future of, uh, of any country. So at the end, also, I would like to thank the organizing committee. Uh, we have Dr. Irshad, Dr. Basim Masoud, uh, Dr. Mohammed Janjua, and Dr. Robin Christie. And also, I would like to thank our administrative assistants, Mrs. Praba and uh, Mr. Archie, for helping us in organizing this uh, beautiful symposium. Also, I would like to thank uh, the KICS team headed by Dr. Mohamed al muheli which was, يعني, I, hope, I hope they have, يعني, um, they have relaxed now after having these two busy days. And I think uh, we hope success for the future of this uh, type of symposium and how we can interact between each other uh, all around the country. And also we hope that this symposium will bring more collaborations between uh, the industry and the academia. And we know that this is very important for the success and the sustainability of the future of the kingdom and all other countries. So thank you all for uh, these uh, nice talks, very important talks that will give us a lot of knowledge how we can go through uh, later on. So thank you all again. And uh, thank you again, 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 and again for these beautiful talks. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.